So now we're going to look at if we want to start combining those fractions. What operations are we using and how does it work? So, arithmetic, what are we doing? Add and subtract, multiply and divide. So we'll look at those different options. First one we're going to look at is multiplying fractions. So in that first little box, to multiply fractions, multiply the numerators together. And, what else? Multiply the denominators. So, the language I like to use, straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So, that example that you have in the box, A over B times C over D. Again, multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. And we get A times C, B times D. Generally, in math, um, we kind of skip around between using an operation symbol or just writing multiplication of the numbers just close to each other um, when we're talking about variables. So if I throw in numbers, I want to explicitly say I'm multiplying these two things. So if I'm multiplying 2 times 3, it doesn't look like 23. But with variables, this is explicitly saying, I guess it would be implicitly saying, A times C over B times D. All right. So let's do some. Multiply 5 over 6 times 9 over 25 and simplify. So after I multiply, I want to get it down into the simplest form possible. So again, straight across the top, straight across the bottom. And we don't have to combine them. We can keep them in their factors like that because eventually I want to break it down and see if I can cancel out common factors between any of them. So, how can I break up 9? 9 is 3 times 3, 6 is 2 times 3, and 25 is 5 times 5. So, if you need to break it down into its factors, its primes, you can go that route. So then it's very easy to see, am I missing any factors that I can get rid of? So, again, same thing divided by the same thing. 1, 3 will be gone. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. So what are we left with? I have a 3 up in the numerator and 2 times 5 in the denominator, which gives me 3 tenths. So if I multiply these two fractions together, I get out a simple 3 tenths. We like this form a lot better than what we started with. So take that try. Multiply those three fractions and simplify as far as you can go. So, multiplying straight across the top, 3 times 5 times 7, those are all prime, and I have 8 times 3 times 2. 2 and 3 are prime, but 8 I can break up, so we might as well. I'm just going to say 4, 2, 3, 2. I can break up 8 into 4 times 2. We don't always have to break it down into the farthest primes that we can. If I can just look for common factors between the numerator and the denominator, we can go that route. So observing, is there anything common between the numerator and denominator that we can cancel out? So same thing divided by the same thing gives us 1. Are there any other factors that we can cancel out? No. So this fraction turns out to be 35, 5 times 7, over 4 times 2 will give me 8, times another 2 will give us 16. So 35 over 16 is what we're left with. All right. So we multiplied. Now let's look at addition. If I'm trying to add fractions with like denominators, what happens? So what does like denominators mean? To add fractions when the denominators are the same, we add the numerators together keep the same denominators. So, what does that look like? Let's just do that first example. 4 over 8 plus 5 over 8. So, we divided it into the same number of parts. So, we keep that same denominator and we just add across the numerator. So, I'm looking at 9 eighths. Pretty simple. When we have those same denominators, it's pretty simple. But what has to happen when we have different denominators? So, we need to make them common. 
And if we can help it, we want to deal with the least common denominator, the smallest numbers I can work with. I want to run with those, so I don't have to do that much work in the end when I'm simplifying. So, turning the page, there's two different options. They have the same fractions that we're adding together. We're going to observe them in two different ways. So the first option that we're going to look at is getting a common denominator. It's not necessarily going to be the least common, but this method is always going to work. It'll just require a little bit more work in the end. So to get common denominators, we can always just multiply uh, each of the denominators by the opposite denominator. So I can multiply 6 by 4 and 4 by 6, and we'll get a common denominator between the two of them. So, equivalently, let's roll with it. I'm going to multiply each of them by 1, but I'm going to write that 1 in a different form. Same thing divided by the same thing. So, again, I'm trying to multiply 6 by this denominator, 4. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. And what do I need to multiply this one by? 6 over 6, that form of 1. So what are we looking at? Again, multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. I'm looking at 4 24 plus 18 24 And now that we have common denominators, we have the same number down here, we keep that denominator and add across the top. So 18 and 4 gives us 22. But is that simplified as far as we can go? Is there anything in common between 22 and 24 that we can take out of both of them? So they're both even, so a factor of 2. So this is equivalent to what? 11 over... 12, if I remove a factor of 2 from each of them. So that's one round that we can go. We can always get common denominators just by multiplying the denominators together and running with that number. But we have to do a little bit of work at the end and simplify. If these numbers are larger, that can get troublesome. So how can we design a better solution? I want to pick a denominator that's common between these two. And specifically, I want the least common. I want the smallest one. So, again, let's break up the denominators off on the margin. 6 is 3 and 2, and 4 is 2 and 2, until we break into the primes. So, what is the least common denominator between these two? Least common denominator. So, let's just take one and build from there. If I start with 6, what is my LCD missing that this other factor has? So, what haven't I taken into account? Another factor of 2. So, my LCD then in this case is 12. So, is that kind of ringing home with what we just computed? Least common denominator down there? Yeah. Okay, so how do we get there? So we know what the least common denominator is, so let's rewrite our fraction with that least common denominator. So, what do I need to multiply 6 by to turn it into 12? Factor of 2. Again, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top, because what am I multiplying by? Factor of 1. And what do I need to multiply 4 by? to give me 12 for a denominator factor of 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So, let's get our common denominators. Multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So I have 2 twelfths plus 9 twelfths. All together, what are we getting? Same thing. But what didn't we have to do at the end? I didn't have to simplify. So how did A and B differ in this one? When we kept our LCD, we didn't have to simplify, but we did have to simplify in part A. Simplify in part A. 
So if we can help it, we want to run with that least common denominator because it's going to save us a lot of work if we're just a little bit mindful in the beginning. So we're going to practice adding fractions with different denominators so you get comfortable with that process. You will need it later on in algebra, so get comfortable using that uh, LCD because we're going to see it a bunch. So what happens? First of all, figure out what is the least common denominator. Rewrite the fractions with those denominators. Add them together and then simplify if you need to. And if we use the LCD, we're usually just simplifying by a small number or maybe not even at all. So let's practice. First example, adding together 3 over 8 plus 5 over 12. So we want to first design the least common multiple between 8 and 12. So let's break it up into their primes and we'll build from there. So 8 I'm going to break into 4 and 2. 2 is prime. 4 is 2 and 2. Done. We also want to break up 12. I'm going to go 4 and 3. 3 is prime. 4 can be broken down farther. So, what's my LCD? I'm going to start with 8. I have 3 factors of 2. And what is my LCD missing that my factors of 12 have? So I've already taken into account the 2's. What am I missing? A factor of 3. All right, so our LCD then is 24. So we've got 6, 12, 24 all together. So, we know what we're working towards. How do I turn 8 into 24? What do I need to multiply by? Factor of 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And to turn 12 into 24, we need to multiply by a factor of... Again, we only are multiplying by 1 in each of these cases, so we're not changing the expression, we're just changing what it looks like. So, what are we looking at? I know my denominators are going to look like this, because that's how we designed it to be. So what equivalent numerator am I looking at? 9 and 10. So all together I've got 19 over 24. And we want to ask, can I simplify any farther? Can I break it down at all? It's as far as we can go. All right, next. We are looking at 11 over 30 plus 5 over 18. So as it stands, I can't combine them together because they don't have the same denominators. So let's build a common one. And if I can help it, it's going to be the smallest. So let's break up 30. I'm going to say 3 and 10 is the one I'm starting with. 3 is prime. 10 can keep going. Now we hit all primes. 18, I'm going to say 9 and 2. 2 is prime. 9 is not. Now we're done. So let's build that LCD. I'm going to start with 30's factors. And we have to ask. What is my LCD missing that these other ones have? Another factor of 3. We've already taken into account one of them. We've already taken into account 2. So what is our LCD that we're looking at? 90. So again, what do I need to multiply 30 by to give me 90? Factor of Three. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. We're just multiplying by one, changing what it looks like. And to turn 18 into 90, we need to multiply by a factor of 5. So again, we know what our denominators are going to be. We designed them to be the same. And what about the numerators? I've got 3 times 11 will give me 33, and 5 times 5 will give me 25. So now that we have the same denominators, we can add across the numerators. So what do we have? 58 over 90. Do they share anything in common that I can take out of both of them? 
Can I simplify any farther? I can take out a factor of 2. So 90 divided by 2, 45. 58 divided by 2, 29. Can we simplify any farther? We should always look, but in this case, no. We're simplified as far as we can go. So turn in the page, one for you to try. Add those two fractions together. Work with the least common denominator. So what did you come up with? First thing we should be looking at is getting a common denominator. Specifically, I want the least common. So let's break down 24. I'm going to say 6 and 4, 3 and 2, those are prime, 2 and 2, and we also want to break up 40. I'm going to say 4 and 10, 2 and 2, 5 and 2, all of those are prime. So what was your least common denominator? If I start with the multiples, 24, what is my LCD missing that the other one has? Factor of... So that's a large LCD. We got 120. So we know what we're working towards. How do I turn 24 into 120? What did you need to multiply by? Factor of 5. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And to turn 40 into 120, we have to multiply by a factor of 3. 3 over 3. So, equivalent form to what we're starting with is going to be 65 over 120, multiplying across the top, and 21 over 120. So now that we have the same denominators, we can add across the numerator. So what are we looking at? 86. And can we break that down any farther? Can I simplify it? So do they share anything in common that I can take out of both of them? Factor of 2. So if I take out a factor of 2 out of each, we're left with 43 over 60. Nice. Okay, so we've covered multiplying them together, adding them together, two left to check. Subtraction, very similar to addition, but just one little extra tweak. So what happens? Just like addition, we multiply each by 1 to obtain common denominators. Then we subtract numerators and keep the same denominator. Then simplify if we have to. So we're similar. Let's do a few. 9 over 8 minus 4 fifths. So as it stands, we can't combine them. But what is going to be our least common multiple? So I like to do it off on the side. And 8, we can break into 4 and 2, 2 and 2. 5 is prime. So what is our LCD going to be? So if I take my factor of 8, I'm just going to write it as 8 so I can fit it over here. What is my LCD missing that the other one has? Factor of 5. Pretty straightforward. So our LCD, 40. So what do I need to multiply 8 by to turn it into 40? 5, just multiplying by each other. And 4 fifths, to turn 5 into 40, we need to multiply by 8. Whatever we do to one, we have to do to the other. So what are we looking at? I know what my denominators are going to be now. And what do I have up in the numerator? So 9 times 5, I've got 45 over here. And 4 times 8 will give me 32 on the right. So we're looking at what? 45 minus 32, 13 over that same denominator. Can we simplify any farther? Nah, 13 is prime. We can't break it down at all. All right. Next, I'll just give them labels. 5 tenths minus 1 fifth. So I like this example because we don't really have to write off in the margin to figure out what the LCD is. What is my least common denominator going to be? 10, because 5 goes into 10. 
So how do I turn 5 into 10? What do I need to multiply by? Factor of 2 over 2. So we're looking at 5 tenths minus 2 tenths. So how many tenths am I left with? 3. And 3 is prime, so we can't break it down at all. All right, give it a shot. Do your try. Subtract 7 over 8 minus 2 fifths. So, what was your LCD between 8 and 5? We've already worked with it. 40. So, we need to multiply 8 by 5. So, factor of 5 over 5 to get us there. And we need to multiply 5 by 8 over 8. So we have an equivalent expression that we're looking at. It's 35 over 40 minus 16 over 40. So how many factors of 40 do you have all together? 19. Good. All right. We hit addition. We hit subtraction. We hit multiplication. What's next? So reciprocals are next. Surprise, not division yet. But reciprocals and division are tied together with multiplication in there, too, actually. So the first conversation we're going to have, what is a reciprocal? What does it do? What does it mean? So two numbers whose product is 1 are called reciprocals, or in other words, multiplicative inverses of each other. So. All the arithmetic numbers except what have reciprocals? Except zero. He doesn't have a reciprocal because I can't divide anything by zero. Okay. So what does it mean to be the reciprocal of something? We're basically taking the fraction, flipping it upside down. So the reciprocal of two-thirds we interchange the roles of the numerator and the denominator. Its reciprocal is three halves. Because if I multiply them together, what comes out? So I've got six divided by six, which is one. All right, reciprocal of nine. How can I rewrite nine as a fraction without changing it? Just changing what it looks like. I can put it over one. So its reciprocal is going to be one ninth, interchanging those rules. And again, we can check. Since 9 over 1 times 1 over 9 is 1. So reciprocals, when we multiply them, we always get out 1. And we can use that to our advantage. So let's divide 2 thirds divided by 7 fifths. Okay. So this is one way that we could write that notation. But another way that we could write it is a fraction, two-thirds, the first one, divided by the second fraction. Okay. And let's just say we wanted to turn this denominator into one. So what can I do? I want to multiply by what to turn this denominator factor into one? It's reciprocal, five over seven. But whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top. So we designed the bottom to turn out to be 1. Since they're reciprocals of each other, I can flip this one over and I get my first term. I know this is going to be 1 down here. And what are we left with up top? We're multiplying two fractions. So we multiply straight across the top. I've got 10. Straight across the bottom, I'm looking at 21. Okay, and anything divided by 1 is just itself. So coming out of there is 10 over 21. So what does that mean? What does that mean for division? If I'm looking at 2 thirds divided by 7 fifths at the bottom of your page, how can I rewrite it? 2 thirds times what? 5 sevenths. Multiply by the reciprocal. That's all that's really happening with division by a fraction. So again, we always keep the first one or the top one 
exactly how it is and we multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom one or the second. Okay. So let's do a few of those. First example, we are dividing one half by three fifths. So again, division is really multiplying by the reciprocal. So I keep the first one stable, exactly how it is, and I multiply now by the reciprocal of three fifths. So I'm looking at five thirds. And we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So I've got five over six. I like that form way better than the division in the beginning. What about the second one? Five sixths divided by 30. So again, if it's helpful in the beginning, go ahead and write 30 as a fraction. What can I divide 30 by and still get the same thing out? Oop, one. So division is really keeping the first one constant, exactly as it, uh, <laughs> exactly as it came. And we're now multiplying by the reciprocal of the second one. So the reciprocal of 30 is 1 over 30. So what are we looking at? 5 over 180. When we multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. And I could break 180 into 36 times 5. So, same thing divided by the same thing. Those are going to be gone. And what am I left with in the numerator up here? I need that placeholder 1 still. 136. Alright. So, two for you to try. Divide those two. Simplify if you need to in the end. Alright, so what did you get? Keeping the first one constant, we want to multiply by the reciprocal of the second. All right, so we could even simplify here if we wanted to, because the factors are already broken up, or you can combine them and then look at breaking them up again. So I want to ask, is there anything that I can take out of both of these factors? I can take out a 3, so 3 goes into 9 3 times, 3 goes into 12 4 times. So we can simplify right now, and then we can multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and we don't have to simplify. Or you could have gotten 24 over 45, then taken out the factor 3 and gotten to the same place. But if you're comfortable simplifying somewhere in the middle, go for it. And the last one, 36 divided by 4 ninths. So again, if it's helpful, write 36 as a fraction. Keeping that one constant, multiplying by the reciprocal of the second. So, multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom, we're looking at 324 over 4, which is 81. Or you could have even simplified here. 36 divided by 4 gives me 9. 9 times 9 is 81. However you want to get there. We'll end up at the same place. So now we can combine fractions in a lot of different ways. We need least common denominators to add and subtract together. Multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Dividing is really just multiplication, but with one extra step. Keeping the first one constant, multiplying then by the reciprocal of the second one.